One organization helps area families achieve self-sufficiency. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Local Edition. With me this hour is David Ford, the Outreach Director for the Bucks County Opportunity Council. Thanks for being with us, David. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Good to see you, too. In the past, we've talked about some of the different programs that you offer, including mm -hmm. some tax assistance for low-income families. But talk to us a little bit about your organization and some of the families you reach out to help in the area. Well, the uh, organization's mission is to help low-income people achieve and maintain self-sufficiency. We do a broad range of things, free tax preparation, emergency assistance with housing utilities, weatherization to help people lower their energy bills, food assistance to this year 44,000 people, um, and uh, many other things like a self-sufficiency program, asset development programs, things like that. So really we're talking about some short-term essential needs, things like food, but we're also ta talking about long-term self-sufficiency. Absolutely. Um, you know, in the short term we basically help people stabilize their situation with a one-time intervention that will hopefully help them uh, bridge the gap and become self-sufficient or uh, you know prevent any need for future intervention uh, and the long-term programs really help people get permanently self-sufficient uh, our goal is to, to get people to the point where they no longer need cash welfare subsidy like section 8 cash assistance and food stamps and this has been successful over year the years a number of families have been able to have affordable housing, have mm -hmm. a sustainable income, and also uh, to not receive things like food stamps or Section 8 vouchers. Right. Uh, since 1997, 182 families have gotten to the point where they're completely self-sufficient. That means they have a family sustaining wage, safe, affordable housing, reliable transportation, no longer have any need for cash assistance. 52 of those families are homeowners. Uh, as of October 1st, we'll be graduating another 17 or so to self-sufficiency so we're closing on that 200. <laughs> what kind of difference does this make in the life not just of an individual but really of a whole family? Uh, it's incredible I mean the stories would would bring tears to your eyes quite honestly um, the fact that uh, somebody who was formerly on welfare struggling really with no hope at all turns to us uh, we provide the support that they may not have ever had in their lifetime uh, we provide the support and the financial assistance and the guidance and the coaching to help them really achieve what they may believe inside they can achieve but haven't had the opportunity to do so. These individuals and families are also contrib contributing to the economy but they're also great savers. They are, they are, yeah. I mean one of the things that comes along with the self-sufficiency work that we do is, is a disciplined approach to you know budgeting, household management, um, expenses, um, you know making frugal decisions that really you know a lot of folks should be making and you know provide them with an opportunity to balance their budget. You are having Economic Self-Sufficiency Achievement Awards Ceremony on October 1st. Why is it important to honor the people who are graduating from this program, but also those who have been successful? Well, honestly, there, there are a lot of things done at that, uh, at that ceremony. We invite the people who are currently in the program, in addition to the folks who are graduating, because oftentimes seeing somebody who's achieved it on their own, uh, as opposed to just a case manager telling you you can do it, is inspiration enough to keep somebody persevering towards self-sufficiency. And you know, we honor the people that, that have worked hard, that have been motivated to make a change and forego those, those subsidies. It takes money in order it to does. help make these individuals and families self-sustaining and be uh, an important part of, of their future in terms of their finances. But you receive portion of your funding through the United Way. Talk to us a little bit about the importance of that funding and the flexibility it gives you in terms of the programs that you can offer. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a relatively small part of our total budget, but it's one of the most critical pieces because United Way funding is private revenue that can be invested legally and ethically in someone who's hardworking and motivated in any way we see fit. Um, a lot of times it pays for child care if there's none available anywhere else, so the person can go to school, get the education they need to uh, secure employment that pays a family sustaining wage. The United Way campaign is underway. Many workplaces are, are part of this campaign, and I know that you as a, as a, a member agency, are, you're actually participating as well. Yeah, we, we do have an employee campaign. Uh, I've been a contributor uh, to United Way since I joined the workforce out of college, and uh, I'm proud to do so. When we talk about funding through the United Way, people can do it through their workplace, but what kind of difference does it make in the life of an individual to have this ancillary funding? Well, it's amazing. I mean, we talk about numbers and, and impact in, in kind of a, a broad way, but you're really changing people's lives, and that, that's what makes the difference. All right, thanks so much, David. Sure. We've been talking with David Ford, the Outreach Director for the Bucks County Opportunity Council. I'm Jill Horner.